Hi guys, so I've got a new project to show you. It's another Arduino project, but I'm mixing it with some other stuff. So it's kind of like a, a retro time machine. And I'm going to be using one of these, which is pretty awesome. It's Commodore 64. This one was made in 1987, something like that. It's Commodore 64C, so it's like the new design. In fact, I don't need to show you the box. I can show you the actual thing. So this is it here. It just looks a bit like a keyboard, um, but it has loads of ports and things in the back. And one of them is the user port. Now this was uh, a port, let me just put this down. This was a port that people could use to expand their Commodore 64. So it could plug into various peripheral devices. Now, it was also popular with like, hobbyists. People that use Arduino today might well have used the Commodore 64 in the past to do some electronics projects. Now, the Commodore 64 includes a programming language, uh, a standard called BASIC. That's very similar to C++, uh, and so it's very similar to Arduino code. So you can kick out signals from the Commodore at five volts to power things. So you can power LEDs if you want to, you could make it run, say, a plotter or a small robot or something. But I'm going to be using it to contact the Arduino using RS232C, which is the standards that uh, Commodore use. It's very, very similar to RS232, and, uh, but it's not the same TTL levels. So I'm not entirely sure what that means, but what I know it means it's not kicking out 12 volts, it's kicking out um, 5 volts, I believe, which is fine for the Arduino. That can go into the pins and it can detect it. So, uh, where is it? Here it is. Uh, I've got a port adapter. I'll show you this in a bit more close-up. I've got a port adapter and uh, these are a bit difficult to get hold of. I got this one from eBay. Um, it's a, an original C64 port adapter. It has a 0 0.156 inch pitch along here and it has 24 different contacts so 12 along the top and 12 along the bottom and they're all numbered so that you can connect it up to the user port correct correctly so along the top it says 1 to 12 and on the bottom it says a to n but in a bit weird it misses out a couple of things that's why it reaches 12 so it goes a d c d e f no it doesn't say that whatever i'll show you a picture uh, and I'm also using a, uh, a seven, oh no, it's an SN7404N inverter, hex inverter chip, this thing here, and a big bunch of wires, as you can see. Now this plugs in the back and it converts what comes out um, as RS232 to uh, a null modem RS232, which uh, cross-links the RTS and the CTS lines, so that the Commodore always assumes it's able to send messages to the Arduino and the Arduino doesn't really bother with those anymore. Those are kind of old technology. We don't use the RTS and CTS anymore. But RTS is ready to send and CTS is clear to send. And Commodore waits for uh, the external device to be ready before it can send any characters. So what I'm doing is cross-linking so that it fools itself into thinking the other device is ready to receive characters. What I want to be able to do is send a text message from the 64 by typing it in to the Arduino and then from the Arduino to the internet. So although there were modems created for the Commodore, they're a bit difficult to find and I don't know how they work. But I know how to contact the internet using an Arduino, using the Ethernet shield. I'm not going to implement that in this video, but I will do in another one. I want to send information across to the Arduino and put it in the outside world using all the retro styling awesomeness that the Commodore can muster. I'm just using uh, an Arduino Mega 2560. I'm using this one because it has some, uh, some extra interrupts on there and you need those when you're going to be using the software serial libraries, which is what I'm going to be using. Because I want to use the, the USB on here to power the device and also monitor what's coming through from Commodore 64. But I need to get the serial information onto the Arduino. Now I'm using two pins on here, pin 50 and 51, and I'm also going to be using ground. Um, the software serial library allows you to use several pins on 
several, actually it's probably more like 10 on the, uh, the Mega, but I think there's less on the Uno and the Leonardo which you can use. So you'll have to look at the software serial documentation to figure out which ones. In fact, if you load up uh, one of the examples, you'll be able to see which pins you can use. So let's get to having a look at the circuit a bit more closely. Right, so here it is. This is the circuit I've made up. I'll put a diagram up so that you can see that as well. But here's the 7404 chip. It's just a standard hex inverter. You can pick them up for less than a pound, I believe. Um, and this is the port connector. So let's just pop that there. Now you can see that it, it just goes onto a normal PCB board. So it's like an exposed copper layer on the PCB and there are, it's on both sides of the board so there are 12 connections on the top and 12 on the bottom. I've had to mark it top so I don't put it in the wrong way around. I'm not using all of the wires coming off here, I've bent these ones up, the ones that I'm not using. And they all go into the 7404 on one side. Um, some of them come straight out to ground and some of them are connected to themselves and those ones are the, the RTS and the CTS. And uh, the only two that I need coming out of the 7404 chip are these two. Now, uh, I believe this one's RX and this one's TX. And this one here's the ground. So that's basically it. It's really quite simple. It looks a mess. It looks like a bird's nest. But it works perfectly well. Um, so I'm going to plug it in now. And uh, we'll do some of the Commodore programming so you can have a look. Right, so here it is. Here's my setup. <laughs> it's not very good, really, but uh, I'm going to load the program now. Recorded on tape cassette. Right. So load. I'll zoom in a bit when we get to the code. Oh. Tweet. Spacebar. Six four. And it says press play on tape. So we'll just sort of wait for that to... to appear. Something should pop up any second now. If you want to come back in five minutes, maybe that'd be a good idea. It doesn't take that long, really. It'll pop up and say it's found, tweet 64. There we go. I'll just skip that and now it's loading. And there's not an awful lot of code, so it shouldn't take too long. Um, I believe a cassette tape records things at 300 bits per second of the, the cassette, so hopefully it shouldn't take too long. He says, it is still going. Yeah. Are you going to stop now? It's not quite ready. There we go. Done. Right, so I'll press stop on the tape and then I'm going to type run. And there we go. This is what I've started creating it's called Tweet64. It's a basic program. A little bit of graphics. It doesn't really look all that different from the Telemate Shield, really. Uh, so if we just press space, it lets us type something and then if I press F1 on the keyboard now the keyboard's really weird I mean, let's see if I can spin this around so you can have a look the F keys are sort of all listed along here it's a bit strange the keyboard's disgusting really but you know it's, it's like a 30 year old machine almost so it's fine really right, so if I press F1 it says here's your tweet, David. Press F1 to tweet. So if I press F1, it's actually it's connected to the Arduino. The Arduino isn't powered at the moment. Hang on a second. So once it's loaded up, this is what you see. It's uh, a basic little Twitter thing where you can type in stuff, and uh, it'll report back what you've typed, and then it'll ask you if you want to send it or if you want to cancel. So if I press F3, it cancels goes back to the start and if I press F1 it sends it finally. It takes a little while uh, it is, you know, we're working in basic so if I press 
run stop, it says break in 650, that's line 650, so really that's line 65 roughly. I do run stop restore just to get it back to a viewable thing. And I can list the code for you. So here's all the code, there's quite a lot of it. I'm going to put a link to uh, the code in the description. But let's turn this off and on again and I'll show you a very easy way of getting information out via the RS232 line. So, let me just move this camera, hold on. So in order to get information out of the RS232 line, we need to open it first. So let's just start by programming that in. So open, 1, 2, 0, oh, comma, and then you need to tell it what bound rate you're going to load up at. So we're going to go for character 6. Actually, no, we're not. That's 300 bound. Let's do it at... Uh, Two four hundred, which is ten. Press enter to go to the next line. Twenty. Print hash one. That prints it out on this channel. So we're not going to be printing it out to the screen, which would be just print. We're just going to be printing it on this channel, comma, and then we can write hello losers. Actually, that's horrible. I don't mean that. Hello YouTube. And then we're going to print out the same thing to the screen so that you can just see what it would have looked like. And then I'm going to close, oops. I'm used to the keys. Close one. And then end, just so we can go back to the ready. And then that's it, that's the program written. That's all you need to do in order to send something over the RST32. So if I just press one, it says hello YouTube, and it's also sent it across the user port there. I really need to put an NED on that so I can see it working. And it's also gone over to the Arduino and off to my computer. So that's pretty much it. That's everything there is to know. That's not true, there's a lot more. But it's everything you're gonna find out in this video. Um, I'll go over to the Arduino code now and show you what that, uh, how that works. But this is a very simple little circuit that you can build. Um, it's very cheap to do. So feel free to have a go. Right, so here's the code for the Arduino. We're using the software serial library, including it at the top there. We're also starting a string here, and we're starting a couple of variables to help with program flow. Now, software serial library is started by this bit here. I'm just calling it my serial. It's the same code from the, from the example. Uh, I'm using pin 50 and pin 51. Now, in, um, in the software serial library, it does tell you which pins you can use. Let me just pull that up. There we go. Um, not all the pins on the Arduino Mega and Mega 2560 support change interrupts. And it tells you which pins you can use here. And 51 and 50 are listed here. And it says for the Leonardo as well, but I assume that's the same for the, the Uno. But I'm not entirely sure. You'll need to try that out. So let's just go back to the code. In the setup, I'm starting the serial here and I'm starting the software serial here as well. I'm starting at 2400 baud because that's what I'm kicking out from the Commodore 64. It doesn't really go much higher than that unless you get some other hardware and uh, I think the the kernel routines in the Commodore 64 are a bit rubbish or at least so I've read. Um, I don't really understand any of that so I can't explain it further but 2400 baud's working fine for me. And actually that's really fast if you only want a small string of text. Now down here in the loop um, in a similar way to if you were just getting normal serial data, I'm just waiting for the serial to become available and then I'm reading the data in the serial to a char. Char C just there, so I'm just reading it in. Uh, 
and then I'm going to say started equals true just so that I can help with the program flow a little bit further down. Now what I want to do with that C is add it to my string that I declared up here. So what I'm saying is test equals test because I want to keep whatever's in that string plus string C. So I'm turning that char into a string. Now the serial information comes across as um, ASCII code so that's why I need to convert it. Then uh, I've commented this out but it was just I was printing every character out to the serial uh, on the computer so I could have a look at it but I didn't need to do that in the end I can just print it out at the end. So I'm, what I'm doing there down here is uh, if started equals true I've said it is here if I'm starting to receive characters I'm going to create a small delay because basic on the Commodore 64 can be a bit slow and I'm, I'm using dynamically created variables to send across so I think there's a bit of, a bit of a delay so I'm having to give it a delay so that uh, it can bring that uh, string from the serial put it into my test string and then kick it out again so I'm saying is if count equals 4000 print final so once it's run through this loop after it's started it waits till uh, it's ticked up to 4000 and then it will print final now the print final function down here just prints it out to the the normal serial on the computer, the thing you're very, very familiar with, I'm sure, and then it will reset the variables at the end. So that's pretty much it. Now, I want to eventually tweak from the uh, 64, so I'm working on some code for that, but it's not finished, so that'll be another video. But you'll need to sanitize some of the data coming from the 64 if you're going to send it out to, let's say, a PHP file on your server so that it can perform the OAuth task for you, or um, if you're going to crawl the web and you're going to be sending all that stuff straight to uh, the Twitter's front end, then you'll need to do some more sanitization as well. But that's the that's the code for the Arduino.